Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Boost! <laughs> I'm YouTube famous now. Available in 2020, the album, Dad AF. <clears throat> the soundtrack edition. <clears throat> I wish I had you all alone, just the two of us. <laughs> Let me know if you know what that song is in the comment section below, okay? You have to be a true, true fan of the world to know what that song is. I know there's somebody out there that are like, oh my God, I cannot believe you just sang that. Anyway, because I'm a true fan. Boost! So let me know if you know what that song is in the comment section below. Okay. So we're gonna get into some drama today. I don't know if I'm gonna make one video or two videos. I had planned on making two videos. I have enough information to make two videos, but I think I might try to like move it all into one video and just call it a day, we'll see. Um, I actually, like I've been planning for like the last two months or whatever, to get up every morning early, go to the pool, hang out at the pool, get my coffee, you know, then hang out. And I can't go to Las Vegas right now where I wanna be, so, cause it's apparently like crazy town over there. And I don't know, the pools are packed and they're not social distancing and all that kind of stuff. So I try to go to the pool, right? But like when I get there, it's always like there's 3,000 kids and it's just like this little community pool and nobody's social distancing. It makes me real nervous. So I went up there today and there really wasn't anybody there and I was so excited. So I got to go to the pool for two hours today. Uh, it was just very, very relaxing and peaceful. I actually talked to some people that in my neighborhood. It was really nice. It was really, it was very cool. It was very cool and chilling. So anyway, uh, but let's get into this video. Okay, now let me tell you. Yesterday I made a video. I actually did two videos yesterday. And the second video that I did was called um, Jeffree Star Finally Makes a Statement, okay? Which I felt that he had, okay? But I have a feeling that a lot of people kind of felt like it was clickbait. The video, oh my God, is sitting at 202,000 views right now. And it currently has 7,442 likes and 948 dislikes, okay? Which is literally like one of the highest disliked videos I have had on this channel in a long time. So I have to believe it is but the fact that People are like, well, you use this clickbait title because Jeffree Star didn't really make a statement. I explained why I called it that in the video, but listen, okay? Hold on a second. I solemnly swear, <laughs> as a citizen of the drama community, <laughs> is it three fingers? I don't know, what four fingers? Is it I solemnly swear, as a citizen of the drama community, I will not always use clickbait titles i'll try my best as a citizen of the good drama community commentary community whatever i am candle review company to try to not use clickbait titles if it happens sometimes please still watch my video <laughs> okay <laughs> so anyway let's talk about today's video tana mojo should respond to this and what this is we're going to talk about is colin berry uh I don't know if I'm going to talk about the Jake Paul stuff, Shane and Jeffree Star, or the Trisha Paytas stuff that's just come out where she's talking about Shane Dawson. So if I don't talk about that, I will talk about that in my next video. But I want to talk about this stuff that Tana Mojo is acting like, who, what, me, and all this kind of stuff. I actually talked about it in a video like a week ago. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, Colin Barry, I think is his name. Hold on a second. I have a screenshot saved. Um, he was part of Tana Mojo's YouTube channel, collaboration channel that she started called Trash, okay? Uh, I don't have his channel name right here. Hold on a second. I had it pulled up. So, um, he came out probably two or three weeks ago. Yeah, it's Colin Barry. He came out like, I, I think it's, it's pronounced Colin. It's K-H-A-L-E-N. He came out like uh, two, three weeks ago and he made a video talking about his experience with Tana Mojo and that he felt that she uh, interacted with him in a racist way and that like sh he talked a lot about microaggressions. He also talked about uh, Tana Mojo's manager, Jordan, in the video as well and kind of pointed the finger at Jordan. He has uh, since made several videos. I have them screenshot right right here. I think he's made five or six videos about this. The first video was called Finally Revealing the Truth About Tana Mojo. The second video was called Tana Mojo and Jordan Need to Be Stopped. This was, the first one was three weeks ago. That was two weeks ago. The third video was called My Response to Tana Mojo's Apology. I think it was a live stream because it was two hours and five minutes long and 25 seconds. Uh, that was two weeks ago. Um, the fourth video was called I'm a Liar Tana Mojo with a question mark. That was uh, an hour and 17 minutes long. So I think that was probably another live stream. And then he did This is Important. This was two hours and 39 minutes. 
Uh, this was another live stream. I don't know if that was about Tana Mojo, but I'm assuming that it was. Okay. Now, what you need to know about this is that he has kind of come out and he has like very factual like evidence. Factual meaning that it, it's his experience. He shares his experience in his first video. I watched the whole thing. It's surprising to me that Colin's videos aren't getting more views. In all honesty, I mean, we're talking about Tana Mojo. Unless Tana Mojo's age group just really doesn't care. Which I have to believe to some degree that that's probably what it is. Um, that they're just so infatuated with Tana Mo Mojo that they can just explain all these things away. You know, I think we're kind of seeing that a lot. You know, this like very much... Uh, it's not even a double standard. It's a different standard that some YouTubers are held to different, you know, uh, like... <clears throat> esteem. So like Jeffree Star and Tana Mojo can get away with so much whereas somebody else can't get away with the same things. You know where if like and I, I can't remember who I was uh, watching that was saying this. They were saying that uh, if they had done like even like I think maybe it was this video by Simply Nessa that I'm going to talk about where she said if she had even done like one or two of the things that Shane Dawson had done like her channel would be completely gone. Like she would have been canceled right? And I think it's a really fair point when we're discussing these YouTubers these huge creators right? That it's like these people that we hold up, I mean, I am still surprised, you guys. Like, I was going to talk about this in my next video, which I probably will. I think this video is going to go too long, so I'll have to talk about that in my next video. You know, I, I, the thing that's so surprising to me is that still in my videos every single day, I literally have people that will defend Jeffree Star to no end. I mean, to no end. It's like, you know, and this is the thing. It's like, when you are of an adult age, I think, like, to be able to look at that and say, you know, like, yeah, sure, there are problematic celebrities out there. There are problematic people that I like but I'm still gonna stand by them but it's like it's not that it's not like oh this person is problematic but I still like what they do and put out there in the world you know like as an adult choice I kind of understand that you know what I mean like there's a lot of musicians that have you know problematic history I mean it's not like you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I get it. But then, like, people kind of own that and go, oh, I know that there are a lot of problems, but I still like their music or whatever. I don't think that's probably the greatest thing in the world, but I don't, I, I understand that. But what I don't understand, okay, is when you have this, you know, buffet of problematic situations that have happened over the course of somebody's career leading up to today, and somebody sits there and says, but this, but this, but this, and excuses it all the way, right? Like, it doesn't make sense to me, you know? It's like, I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> how can you look at all of that and, and still be just like, oh, but but you don't know, like, and excuse it away, right? And um, this is where, like I said in my video, Jeffree Star doesn't care about you, and people were like, yes, he does, or, you know, like, you don't know what he cares about. I mean, I do know that Jeffree Star doesn't care about his fans because he's pushing more merchandise, and he's pushing more uh, makeup and cosmetics, but he's not coming out and giving any kind of statement, when in the past, he has criticized people that didn't come out and give a statement, okay? Had Jeffree Star not come out and done that, well, then maybe that would be excusable, but he hasn't. Tana Mojo has not come out and addressed this. Keemstar in a tweet, and I talked about this when I talked about in my last video, he came out in a tweet and he addressed Tana directly and said, are you not going to respond to Colin? Like, are you not going to answer this? And um, uh, Tana said, I'm going to do that and so much more. But then she went on to say she didn't want to deflect off of what was going on in the world right now. And I think that she was referring to Black Lives Matter movement. Okay, that's fine. And you know, whatever. But like, if you're going to really, if that's what you really mean. But then she took to TikTok and she's been posting TikToks about the TikTok hype house or something like that, and she's continued to tweet things out. So no, that was total BS, Tana. That was your excuse to get, like, deflect. Like, oh, I'm such a great person. Look at me. Like, I'm not going to put anything out problematic right now, okay? You're literally talking and you're using the Black Lives Matter music, uh, movement as an excuse when Colin is calling you out and saying that you have your own racist problematic history, okay? So is that why you don't want to address it? So then all that happens, and she said that she's going to, you know, talk to Colin and make this right and so much more and all that kind of stuff. So then Simply Nessa comes out with a video yesterday. Now, I have to tell y'all, okay, I don't know much about Simply Nessa, okay? And everything that I do know is that she's the queen of being problematic herself, right? Like, that's my, what I know about Simply Nessa. I did not go in and watch a ton of videos about her, but I watched a few. What I saw in this video, okay, if this is her being 100% genuine and authentic, is not the telling of a problematic person. It really isn't, okay? It's a person that had a friend that screwed them over, and she really just doesn't understand why. And I think to this day, she still thinks it's something about her. Like, that is like, if, I, if she was sitting in front of me, I would say, 
Nessa, you're like looking for answers from a person that does not have the ability, okay, to be compassionate or empathetic towards a human being because I do not believe that Tana Mojo has the ability to be compassionate or empathetic. I have not seen that from her yet. When I do see that, then I can get on camera and I can say that. So here it is that Nessa's like wanting answers to some degree, even though at the end of the video she says, this is important. First of all, she says that as of the day that she's getting ready to post this video, which is Wednesday, that Tana still has not reached out to Colin, okay? So we're talking two weeks later, she still has not reached out, three weeks later, she still has not reached out to Colin, okay? So that excuse that she made to Keemstar or whoever else on the internet was just total BS, okay? She just didn't want to deal with it. I can't be bothered with it. I'm not going to deal with it. So... Then she also says at the end of the video, uh, Simply Nessa says that she is doing this video because she wants to take her power back and she wants to move on and she's got to put this in her past. And I totally understand that, okay? Like, I think most of us have things that we would just rather just like let's address it and move in, move forward, right? Um, and, and this isn't anything that she's done. Like, I mean, she goes in there and first of all, it's not really her explaining her own past. It's her inter explaining her interactions with Tana. When you're watching it, it very much feels like it's a video directly towards Tana and Jordan at some points, her manager, because first of all, this manager, Jordan, if what people are saying is true about him, girl, your problems, okay? I don't know why you're managing anybody, like seriously. And that's just based on what I've heard. So maybe none of it's true, but like, that's, pr I mean, like he's, it's just, it's a lot when you watch this video. First of all, I didn't think I'd ever be doing this video, okay? Truth be told, I slept all through the night. So I got up at 5.30 to finish my vlog or to start and finish my vlog. And then I was hungry. So I rolled through the Hardee's, which is kind of like a Carl's Jr. And I got me myself, uh, got me myself. I got a Beyond Breakfast uh, a sandwich, okay, with cheese and a root beer and some hash browns. So I'm sitting there in the parking lot and I'm like, well, what can I possibly watch when Simply Ness's video comes up? And her video is called Dear Tana Mojo. And I thought, well, this ought to be good. Because I've heard so much about this horrible, horrible Simply Nessa of the world. I mean, I've heard so many things that are horrible about her, right? So I go in there and I took some notes. Of course I did. I took some notes. But anyway, the one thing I will say, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I, <laughs> oh, I even have on here, eating my hearties. <laughs> People ask for a different kind of video. So here you go. This is a different kind of video, not a Shane Dawson video. So anyway, this is the first thing that got me, right? So it's a lot of this he said, she said stuff, okay? And I'm sitting there watching it and she's talking about like, Tana, I just don't understand why she did this. And I just don't understand why she did that. First of all, you can tell when she like goes through, okay, okay. I just have to say this and this is not me taking sides, but this is just me being hundred percent objective. And on a video like this, I can be, cause I don't know none of these people, okay? But when people like not just keep their text messages from three years ago, which they are, but when you know what a text message says from three years ago, it's time to maybe step away from that situation. I'm just saying, okay, like that's a lot. And she says at the end of the video, that she like was like in the hospital and she was really worried and she was going through all this kind of crazy stuff because not that she was crazy with it. Like this stuff was, you know, going on because she just like, it was too much. She couldn't handle it. And all this stuff on the internet was coming towards her. And I totally get that. Like sometimes you just have to sign off, you know, and just be like, I'm not dealing with this today. Right. And maybe she doesn't have the ability to do that because you know, I don't know, maybe she's too young and she's consumed with YouTube. But this is where you see this very sad side of YouTube that all these people are just clout chasers using each other. They're just moving, moving up. And she even talks about that in the ladder. And it's like, you know, that's where it's like, girl, don't have no friends on YouTube. Just do your thing. Do it because you're passionate about it and you love it. Don't do any collabs. It doesn't matter. You can build your channel without collabs. You can be you. You can be, you don't need to mess with none of those people. Okay. Listen, I'm over here in my lane. Leave me over here. Okay. I'm doing my thing. I, I just want to be left alone to do what I love over here. And I suggest the same thing to anybody out there. So she goes into this video, right? And right out of the gate, she's talking about how Tina Mojo started talking about her behind her back. And she's like, well, Magdalena told Danielle, who told Nicolette. And first of all, I'm like, who are all these names? These names, Francesca and Magdalena and all these people. <clears throat> Those aren't even the real names. I don't even know. <laughs> Concertina and things like that. I'm like, well, that was from a book about cats back in the day. P Pickles the Cat. Oh my God, I love that. And the Fire Cat. I love that book so much. But Concertina. She's like, Concertina told Magdalena, told Nicolette and Sheridan and... And I'm like, who are these people? And why are you like, and it's just all this telephone game, okay, with a bunch of kids who have these like very adult careers where they're making millions and millions of dollars, okay? That's the first thing I understand. Second thing I don't understand is these tours that they go on, okay? Who's paying to go see these people on? What do they do on tour? Sit on stage for like what? And just do a story time. 
I, I, st I said it about Tana Mojo. I'm going to say it about it's, it's Simply Nessa. I don't know. She apparently got her tour got canceled or something. I don't know. And Stevie Nicks going on tour instead of her. <laughs> Listen, I'm going on tour. I am, okay? I'm going straight up into the Chinese buffet. Coming to a city near you real quick, okay? We'll eat us some. I don't know. I can't eat no crab meat rangoons anymore because I've been a vegetarian for too damn long. But what would I eat if I went in there? I don't know. Some white rice or <laughs> something. So boring. But no, true story. I'm going on tour. It's called the Chinese Buffet Tour because you know I did love the Chinese Buffet back in the day. But I don't know Simply Nessa and we don't need no Chinese Buffet together and I sure wouldn't pay no ticket to see her in concert, okay? I know she's singing good songs. She do covers. She do covers like a rock on gold dust woman. You know you'd pay you $200 to see that live. What does Simply Nessa do? A story time that she done faked? Okay. So anyway, I don't know her. She, she's probably very, very nice. So she goes on here. She talk about these text messages from three years ago. And she's like, and Tana said this, and I said this, and Tana said this. Okay, well, here's one of the things, is when you are watching, and this is where I kind of started feeling sad for her, because you can tell that, like, Tana Mojo truly screwed her over. Like, you can tell by just, like, sitting here watching it. She wouldn't have to say one thing, and you can tell. Tana Mojo, like, comes for her, comes for her, comes for her. And if you're watching it, okay, you can tell. Tana's sitting with a bunch of people, and these people are saying, Nessa said this, and Nessa said that, and Tana's like, wait a second. And she gets on video, and she's like, did or gets on camera or phone and she starts texting Nessa, right? But then she puts her phone down, she can't be bothered no more, right? And Nessa's like, what is this? Oh my God. And then you see 5,000 texts from Nessa, okay? And they're all in blue. Here, I got screenshots if you want to see. All I have to do is, I don't even have to put it on the, on, the, on the video and I'm not. Hold on a second because you'll just be like, oh my God, look at all that blue. True story. I was like, that's a lot. If somebody like texted me all that kind of stuff, I'd be like, girl, I don't know what I think about all that. Hold on, this is for my next video. But like seriously, look at this. The blue ones are Nessa. I mean, that's a lot, okay? And Tana's not responding to her. Why? Because control is important to Tana. So Tana got, she got her all fired up. And now she can't be bothered because she's out there smoking blunts and drinking and hanging out with her good GDs while Nessa's over here freaking out, okay? Total control. She worked this girl. So I'm watching all this kind of stuff, and I'm like, this is really, really sad, you know, to see all this kind of stuff. Then Jordan, okay, and Tana are telling people behind the scenes, supposedly, allegedly, according to, uh, to Nessa, that, that she's uh, violent and aggressive. That is a huge deal. Okay, that is a huge, huge deal when you're talking about, like, people in this industry and they won't work with you if you have that kind of reputation and sponsors won't work with you and things like that. And you're a YouTube manager and you're telling people that. Then she goes in. This is, she, she says something about, Jordan said, I think you should work with a manager that would under, get, get you better. And she didn't get it at the time because she thought, like, they worked together fine. On the heels of her saying that when he started working with Tana, Tana, <laughs> Tana, I don't know what I want to keep on to calling her Tana or something like Tana Con. But when he got stopped, we started working with Tana, he didn't want to work with her anymore. So he says, I think I'm going to put you with somebody that you'll work, that will get you more. And he puts her with somebody, this man that's black. And she's like, I didn't even get it at the time, right? That's, like, kind of a big deal. Like, let's just be for real. Like, that's a seriously big deal. She's talking about microaggression. She's talking about painting the picture that she's this angry black woman. She's talking about him. You mean, it is, this is, like, some... It's not just a 40-minute video of this girl being disgruntled about her friendship, which is what it seems about. I mean, like, she's really making some va very valid pointed points, you know? Um, which Tana is still not addressing at this point. Um, and then it goes in... Okay, so... Uh, let's see. Okay, let me get into my notes here for a second. I, I talked about the Tana thing. I, I, she won't address this. She talks about her tour being canceled. And, you know, this is the thing. Like, I was watching it, and I said, you know, she wants to get validation, and she'll get it. But I don't think, like, we're seeing a lot of that right now on YouTube. We're seeing a lot of people, like, uh, needing, like, validation from people. And I think the majority of us as YouTubers anyway, just let's be for real, like, we all like the pats on the back. We all like the views. And I've said this from the very beginning, okay? When people get on video and they say, well, I don't care about the subscribers and I don't care about the views. You're a liar straight from the pit of hell, okay? You are a liar straight from the pit of hell. Don't nobody make videos on YouTube because they don't want anybody to watch it. That is such straight up BS. I can't stand when people say that. Don't be calling me up and singing that song from church, okay? Because the choir is going to get up and leave. I'm so tired of when people say that. I don't care about this. And if you don't want to watch me, don't. Don't ever tell your audience not to watch you. Because half of those people that don't like you will get up and go. They will, okay? And you're giving them the freedom to do that. Why would you do that? What that says is, I don't care about my audience, right? 
I care about my audience even when they're the ones that come for me or give me like criticism or whatever. I like the ones that love me too, but I also like the audience that critiques me or says something. I'm like, okay, well, hey, you're still watching my video. Thanks. You know what I mean? Like, thank you for thank you for showing up to my lemonade stand. You want enough? You want a refill? You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand all that. So people say that stuff. But she needs validation on a level from Tana Mojo that's really, really sad because Tana Mojo will never give this to her. And she's had fans come for her of Tana Mojo. Tana blasts her out on Twitter. She's had other people. And now people are coming back and they're apologizing to her. She goes this whole thing about Shane Dawson. It was so cringe with everything coming out about Shane Dawson now. And do I think that she probably made this video because of what's going on with Shane Dawson? Yeah, to some degree I do. But she made this video with Shane Dawson, or she showed this video where Tana and Shane Dawson did this video, and part of it was him, like, reading text messages from her. It was so cringe to watch, and she says after it, like, you're an adult man that, like, is sitting here, like, it, putting yourself in between all these, like, younger girls. I mean, it was so cringe to watch Shane in that moment, and I just was like, what is this about? Like, this is such a bad look. You know, what I, like I said, I don't know Nessa. Um, you know, do, and she, she takes a lot of responsibility in the video. This, I'll probably listen. People will come for me and they'll be like, because she says in there, I'm tired of me. I never liked it when people called me Messy Nessie or Nessa or something like that. So anyway, um, she goes in and she, like, this is the one thing that really, like, I did not like and I thought was kind of cringe about the video is that, like, everything that she says to Tana, she goes and explains why she said it. And it's almost like she's explaining it to Tana. And I'm like, what is going on here? Like, why are you explaining yourself to somebody that does not care about you? Listen, I want to tell you something my mother taught me, okay? My mother said, okay, do not worry about the opinion of those people you do not care about to begin with, all right? So either you care about Tana Mojo and you want to hear what she has to say and you want her to understand why you did what you did, or you don't care about Tana Mojo and just, you know, dance away from my life, okay? And if I was going to give any advice to this Simply Nessa, what I would say is surround yourself with three or four people that are not on YouTube, that don't get the YouTube game, that really, really care about you, okay? She said she lives in Arizona now. Move out of L.A. If you're a YouTuber that lives in L.A., leave right now. Leave, okay? You don't need to be in L.A. to be doing no collabs with people, okay? It's just, it's ugliness. It's sin. It's sin city out there of YouTube, okay? It is. It's sad, Okay? But get your three or four friends off of YouTube that don't ever want to be on YouTube, that don't care about YouTube, that you don't talk about YouTube with, that you drive around like my good Judy Tanya and I and you get fountain pops with and maybe they understand a little bit of it, but they will tell you they'll be your good friends, okay? You don't need none of this YouTube stuff. There's not a person on YouTube out there. I don't think that to some degree ain't trying to screw you or use you, period, okay? I just think that. And I've had some good friends on YouTube. I have, and I have some good friends on YouTube now, you know, and things like that. But I will say this, we don't talk a lot about YouTube. We just don't, okay? We talk about ice cream sandwiches, and we talk about our favorite drinks from Starbucks and what our families are doing and things like that. We don't talk about that kind of stuff, okay? It just it's, it get, gets messy. You don't want to talk about all that kind of stuff 24 hours a day. So that's ready. By the way, and this is my last thing, so I'm going to say but I was going to say this about her making all these explanations. Nessa, you say what you got to say, okay? If you want to get on camera and say F somebody, say it, okay? You don't owe her no... She doesn't care about you. Tana Mojo does not care about you, okay? She has gone out and with tweets tried to, like, ruin your career. She doesn't care about you. She doesn't care about Colin. She hasn't responded to him. And she even acknowledged that and said on Twitter that she was going to come. She doesn't care. Tana Mojo does not care, okay? Tana Mojo, like the rest of these people, care about the almighty dollar. And it's not affecting their almighty dollar right now. So until it does, she ain't going to come out and do anything about it, okay? Until people start demanding a response from her, she ain't going to care. She doesn't care. And we've seen that Tana Mojo hasn't changed through the years. So don't come to me and be like, I was hoping, I was praying, okay? I really, really thought when Tana Mojo came out a year and a half ago and said she wanted to use her platform for good, I thought, here we go, okay? So she'll do three or four, like, messy, you know, like, story times or whatever, and then we'll get, like, where she uses her platform for good for a younger audience. She has not proven that to me, okay? And at that time, I said I was real excited about that happening. That hasn't happened, okay? The last thing I want to say is there's a lot of words that I am ready to be done with in 2020, but... 
one of them at the top of my list, and Nessa uses this in, in her video, she uses the word narrative. I am so tired of that word, okay? People saying, well, this person's narrative, and I probably will say it in my videos, okay? So just know, because I can't get it out of my head. Like, don't you hate that? But people say, oh, someone's saying this narrative, someone's pushing that narrative, you're trying to push, shut up with all that narrative stuff. I am so tired of hearing that, okay? It's like, you wanna use a real word, let's use agenda, okay? It's not narrative, it's agenda. What, what are you trying to do? What's your motive? I'd rather talk about somebody's motive and agenda than I would about pushing a narrative all day long, okay? Because narrative implies a story that we're making up, right? When most of us out there are working with factual evidence that people are tweeting out, putting in videos, or they're putting on Instagram. There ain't no narrative there, okay? We ain't spinning no stories. It's if, do you have a motive or do you have an agenda for what you do? So you have to go watch Nessa's video and see what she's talking about when people say her narrative and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm so tired of that narrative word. I should have stayed at the pool longer. I got so heated up. Now I'm ready to go back in and do some dives and things like that. Do you do handstands and dives? I do, I love it so much. Anyway, Tana Mojo, you need to just do the right thing. Just come out, okay? Just come out and say to her, hey, listen, Nessa, I'm sorry publicly. Okay, that's all she wants from you. And I won't mess with you no more. I will leave you alone. Jordan, your manager needs to come out and apologize and say, I treated you wrong. Why is this so hard? Why is this so difficult? We learned this before we got on the bus for first grade, okay? When you do something that ain't nice, I can't believe I just said ain't. When you do something that isn't nice, you, you apologize for it. Your mom says, go up to Judy Smith. It wasn't nice for you to pull on her pigtails. Now stop pulling on Ness's pigtails and go tell her you're sorry. God, all this. Just too much. Anyway, I love you guys so much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.